Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, there's, these are just some little reflection snippets that I'm doing about different experiments and things that are happening in our family life. Um, when I say Al, I'm talking about me, Aloisa Lynn Hitchens, and um, the three children who are in my care. Sometimes I'll mention Peter, who's the children's dad, um, but he is um, he and I don't live together at the moment, and he lives um, separately. So the children live a week about. Um, he's not doing the same experiments as in his home at the moment, uh, so I'm just doing them um, uh, here uh, in my little in my little uh, corner of the universe. Um, when I say that, it's really God's corner of the universe, and I'm just a, a custodian. But uh, the children and I. Well, hold on, hold on. Not the children and I. <laughs> I am, um, have had the fortunate opportunity um, to hear the teachings of Divine Truth by Jesus and Mary Magdalene. And they have a website and YouTube channel that you can find out more about those. Um, I'll make a comments towards those and I'm attempting to explain um, the things that I have uh, experimented with um, and I'm trialing out from those teachings um, and explain sort of how I'm applying those to my life. Um, if you've got any questions, you're welcome to ask via my blog and the address is on the screen. Um, and I also feel very fortunate to have some very good friends who help like to they give me a lot of feedback, but not just that, they also provide many opportunities. And so many of the ideas and things that I'm doing in, in the family are based upon like just passing comments or, or sometimes conversations, um, sometimes questions that I've asked, or um, sometimes conversations I've had with other people that I've overheard or been privy, or like um, been, uh, been at the discussion. And um, I hear those things and I go, oh, that might be um, help, you know, um, me to, to learn something and then to re-educate the children as well. So I'm, I'm wanting to become a, a good parent from God's perspective. I'm very invested in being a good mum from the world's perspective and I'm finding that that's not having very good outcome for the children. So the children are acting in ways that are highlighting to me very, very clearly that what I've been doing and what I've thought as a good mother is actually causes not a good outcome. Um, what I've also experienced is that if I do things God's way and I actually find out more information about the type of parent that God is to each of his children, so that means every single one of us, so you, me and every single other person on this planet, um, that a lot of the time, well, actually, let's be honest, every single time that I apply um, some of God's truths and actually actually do them properly there is always a, a better result in, in, in the family and um, it is really positive when I say positive it's just I'm starting to see it that it feels positive to me because my normal is flawed and God's normal which is is following God's laws and doing things God's way that's how the world should be, like that's how God created the whole universe to be. But we are in like such opposition to that. Well, and I, I speak from personal experience, I am in certain, like, have been in such opposition to that, that it, to me now when I try doing certain things God's way and I really actually do them, um, it's not that I always find them very easy, but when I actually do it, the result feels exceptionally positive to me. <laughs> And I feel like it, it's it's probably not from God's perspective, probably like normal from God's perspective, but because my normal is so non-normal, um, when you compare it to God's normal, um, it, it makes it feel like it's very positive. And because when I first heard the teachings of divine truth nine years ago, the truth um, really like, really changed my life because for the first time someone was actually saying something to me that um, it sort of like hit my heart in the sense of like, yeah, that's true, because they also like, um, it validated a lot of experiences and things that had happened to me that my family environment had completely told me, were, like literally had, had 
undermined and said well that's fake and that's not true and that's not how it is and we know best and I'd been sort of like well but that's what I feel and and was really hard and the truth was like oh no that's right like that's that is how it is um, and I think I had some very good guidance as well um, and confirmation feelings of those things as well so I mean I've actually applied certain truths that I've heard and it has been through the application and my own personal experience in regards to those truths that I now know in my heart that they're true and I know that they're true. Um, and it doesn't matter what you say or anyone else says to me, there's certain things now that I know are true. So for instance, <laughs> I know that if I'm truthful and I honor truth and I, um, and I really seek and desire to become more loving, um, that that even that intention and desire has a positive result and has a consequence that um, is really good. So for example, the first experiment I tried that I've talked about in another video was um, the children used to like come and just cling on me, particularly the boys, they'd just cling on me, they'd be in my face, they'd be loud and screaming, I couldn't have a conversation, they'd take food off my plate if we were having dinner, um, they would like punch me and bash me, bite me, um, a lot of different things would happen. Uh, they run around wildly, they would destroy the house that literally I'd clean up 15 minutes later, it was just a mess and again just dirty, like they'd, they'd walk in from the dam with little dirty feet, in they go, they'd like poo on the floor, they'd like, there was no, it was like living in a barn, I, I don't know, like it, it wasn't good at all, um, it felt terrible and I just was sort of like overwhelmed and exhausted. Anyway, so the point is, is that truth uh, changed my life. So um, I had the, uh, the opportunity when um, Jesus and Mary were visiting us down at um, New South Wales where we used to live and they were visiting our home and having dinner and they just stopped the conversation one day and they said, oh, Eliza, what's going on? Like, like what, what's happening right now? And, um, and I was a bit like, well, oh, I don't know. Like, I think I was a bit sort of blown away and, and they'd been sort of encouraging um, all of us at the time, the Lyddon Hitchens family, so Pete and his parents and I would, would have dinner and other people as well from the surrounding area, they'd also come and have meals or discussions with us um, in our home. And anyway, they just stopped me and encouraged me to, to feel about what was happening. And as soon as I actually hit the feeling of what I was really truly feeling in that moment, the children like had been literally hanging off me, they just, they just slid down off my knee, they're very small, they're like two, three, four, they slid off and off they went and played, like totally quiet, like completely quiet. And I was just sort of like, what just happened? Um, and that was my first experience of, of the power of truth, of just being honest. And all I was honest about was, was the fact of, this is how I feel right now. And this is the truth of what I feel. And I connected to that feeling, bam, they were gone. So what I learned from that experience was that every time that I denied the, the feelings that I have and deny the, the feeling in my own heart of what's really, you know, what I really feel, I was pulling the children, like this is what, it, to me this is how I conceptualize it. It's like I have these emotional feelings like coming out of me like this. Um, or I have these, there's all these emotions in me. And what happens is if I don't feel something or I felt worried and afraid, it's like I have like, it's like they're in here if I'm owning them and, and like I'm feeling and, and there's feelings. If I don't, it's like ping and out they go. And it's like these message of emotions that whizzed out to the kids and like sort of like hooked into the children, pull them in. And they literally came in and clambered all over me. And they were around subjects like uh, sex, um, family, abuse, um, ang angry people, um, so I'm talking about my, my dad or my mom, all those things would, would pull the children into me. And so I began to experiment with this. So each once the um, Jesus and Mary left, I actually would sit on the floor and I would just sit there and I would think about, um, like I would just own, I feel, and I would just let myself feel it. And, and I noticed this thing, it was amazing. It was like I'd sit there or I'd lie off and I'd just lie there and just be like, I can't cope. And then I'd and then I'd own what I felt. And so would it be like, it'd be like this, it'd be like owning and I'd be like, oh, or, or I'm so angry or, or like, well, that's probably not how it was like, I'm so fucking angry. Oh, excuse me, I probably shouldn't swear on here. So I'm so 
angry or whatever I was going on and then I would notice that um, as soon as I uh, and then the children would all run off and play and then it would be like oh, and then I'd be like awesome they've like gone oh, cool now everything's good bam out my feelings went again because <laughs> the kids would run in be climbing all over me or all those things and then I'd be like ah oh, feel really how I felt again bam they were gone off they were playing quietly happily or just they just like go to the side and everything was quiet and calm and amazing so yeah, I had some really interesting experiences with this and experimenting, such as that we used to go to the supermarket. I hated going to the supermarket. Hated it. Oh my God, I hated it. Because the kids would literally like, they would run off, so we'd get out of the car, they'd run through the parking lot. Firstly, I was like terrified they'd get run over. Secondly, then they'd run up like the escalators or into the, into the place and they'd run down the thing. So I didn't even really half the time know where they were. Then they'd run to the supermarket, they would like eat stuff, they would take stuff off the shelves, they, like one time they like just weed on the floor because they couldn't, you know, they didn't tell me they needed to go to the toilet. Um, and uh, they would like pull stuff off the shelves and like leave it in the aisles. I'd, like, I'd just get like these looks. <laughs> I'd just get these looks from people of like, you are such a bad mother. Um, and you have no control of your children. I didn't, I didn't have any, they're right. But it was a, it wasn't a very nice feeling. And, and I would just be like, oh my goodness, it's so, you know, I'd be like apologizing to everyone and, but not doing anything about it. So the truth helped me because as I began getting this, um, this knowledge of, it's what I used to call it going out of body, um, or I think uh, psychologically it's called disassociation. And what I was doing is I was no longer staying connected to the feelings I had or to what was really happening in my heart um, and what I really was feeling. And so I'd go away from myself um, emotionally. So I, it was sort of like I was walking around doing actions, but I wasn't really connected to how I felt or what was really happening. And sometimes stuff would happen and I didn't even notice. And I'll talk about that in a minute um, with the hair incident. But um, yeah, with the supermarket, I realized this, this this association thing and that I realized, oh, when I'm in public places or at the supermarket, I feel quite terrified just of having so many people there and judgments and, and how they think about me and all kinds of emotions that I had. And as I realized that, I realized when I went to places and I didn't want to feel those things, like I didn't want to feel uncomfortable, I didn't want to feel the sadness of being judged, I didn't want to feel um, my anger about being judged, you know, all these different feelings. For instance, there were a lot of other things. Um, I'd, I'd go away and then the kids would go wild and act out. And so as I began staying connected to myself and owning it, I started doing that at the supermarket too. And the children would actually behave differently. Um, and through that, out that time, there was a period of time where I'd go and things were still very, very messy. And I'd just hide behind cardboard signs and have a cry. Or um, I would like, sort of, uh, the children would like just be yelling and screaming. Oh my goodness, they like, totally screaming their heads off and I'd just put them in the trolley and then I'd hide behind a cardboard sign like near so I could see them and just let them yell. <laughs> or I'd have to take them out to the car and like let them yell. Um, and and it was it was just a nightmare. But over time, that actually changed, and the more present, so pre using the word present, I mean, the more that I actually owned the fact that wow, I just feel really terrified in a situation, um, and the more that I actually honoured the fact of whatever I felt in the moment um, when I was in the supermarket, the children changed completely, and they uh, we I actually enjoyed going shopping. Um, I could say no and they didn't argue because um, we used to come home pretty much with a toy at the beginning every single time because I could, didn't want to say no to them because I didn't want a big tantrum. Um, and after a few tantrums and I knew, what I've noticed is that when I had a, a shift in my own heart that was like solid of like, I am not doing this anymore, I, I didn't really have to say anything to the children, they just wouldn't ask anymore. And so it's almost like they felt, well I know, they feel what I, fe what I felt was far more powerful than the words I said. In fact, they just don't even listen to the words I say. It's it's what I feel that they react to. So I learned that lesson in that process too. And at the supermarket, they ended up now like being really good helpers and now they can actually do an entire shop on their own if you give them a list. And they they can now check out because we've been practicing, well they couldn't do that way back then. Um, but in the last um, year, they've actually been um, with the self-checkout things, which is quite cool. They've all been learning about how to self-checkout and um, they've just set up bank accounts. So the ne next part is that they'll be having funds in there and um, they'll be able to even pay for their own food. So though I'm uh, 
nine years after, or well, probably was like eight years after the first conversation that a child can be completely independent by age five, um, that Jesus and Mary had with me. Uh, the children are, well, one's eight coming up, nine, ten, and eleven. So, what, five, six, seven, eight. So, a bit six years late, but um, for the oldest child, um, they are beginning to become more independent and more self responsible. Uh, but my main focus is on their emotional responsibility and their attitude because if they've got the right attitude it won't matter what happens or, or where they're at or anything like that they'll still act in a responsible manner meaning that they will take care of their environment they'll they'll have a sense of love or at least ethics with um because they don't have to love others but they're at least ethically um, i'm hoping treat themselves and other people um, I'd, I hope that they'll get to morality, meaning doing what God feels is right. But, you know, we'll, we'll see. Um, I'm going to supply the environment, and I've got to work on a lot of different things in myself in order to do that. But, um, as Jesus and Mary have always said to me, you don't have to be perfect to do it. You just need to learn yourself, and then um, when you know in your own heart about certain things, you can actually share them with others. And um, that's what I'm attempting to begin to do. And I'm also learning that I can learn, well, it's kind of like we can learn along the way together. So I can be learning a whole lot of different things um, or noticing different things. And then I'm noticing that I make um, decisions or come up with little experiments, what I call my little experiments, um, that actually can sort of foster and set up an environment for the children. Um, and as I said, I'm just very grateful for the opportunities that have been gifted to me from Jesus, Mary, Tristan, particularly um, with the ideas and their, um, yeah, just their inspiration of a lot of different other things that are uh, like their teachings, really, um, Jesus and Mary's teachings, um, because those are what I continuously go back to and I continuously re listen to um, in order to work through my own issues. And I'm finding as I work through my own issues, that has the biggest, greatest impact on the children and the environment. Um, if I don't work on something, that thing doesn't change and it can't until there's an emotional experience of what is inside of me and that emotion is actually released and felt through, so um, meaning that you have to feel feelings and until they're fully felt, no change happens and I know that for certain. <laughs> um, I've tried to change by thinking it, I've tried to change by talking, I've tried to change people, other people by being angry, I've tried to change people by like all kinds of different things. I've tried to change myself by be, you know being angry at myself, I've tried to change myself by thinking that I can do it and honestly situation comes up not changed. So uh, now I know that it is definitely has to be an emotional change I still don't always want to do the emotional changes um, at times, but I do know that they work. So that's just a little snippet and a bit of background about where we used to be and um, some of the changes that are beginning to happen um, now with things that are happening. So I hope you enjoyed this little uh, reflective snippet and um, yeah, good luck with your own parenting if you're, if you're having a go with certain things.